Two weeks ago I wrote an article for Ethan's great medium collection called Starts with a Bang that you should all follow of course. I wrote about whether black holes can destroy the universe and the answer is yes they can. Since then I've been getting a lot of email from people who are worried that the LHC will create black holes which will then destroy the universe. So here's a short explanation why I think this is very unlikely to happen. First some terminology. Vacuum meter stability. For all we presently know, the vacuum that we live in is not permanently stable because it's not the state of lowest possible energy. It's only a meter-stable state and it will eventually decay into a state of even lower energy. In that decay process, a lot of energy will be released and it's enough to tear apart all matter. That's how the end of the universe comes about. Such a meter-stable state is very similar to the liquid that you have inside chemical hand warmers if you've ever seen them. These are bags filled with a supercooled liquid and there's a small metal plate inside. If you twist this metal plate, you create a nucleation seed and that will turn the liquid into a solid. And in this process, there's energy release which you can feel as heat. How do we know that the vacuum is unstable? Well, we don't actually know that the vacuum is unstable. This is just an extrapolation based on the measurements that we presently have. The potential that determines the stability of the vacuum has some parameters and these parameters can be extracted from data that we get at the LHC. However, this extrapolation makes assumptions about energy ranges where we do not actually have data. How long will it take for the vacuum to decay? From the same parameters that tell us that the vacuum is unstable, one can also estimate how long it will take for the vacuum to decay. This decay time is very, very long. It's much longer than the age of the universe so far. It's about 10 to the 100 years, which is ridiculously long. At this time, all stars will have died and life will have become impossible. Can black holes trigger vacuum decay? Last month now, I read a new paper that studied how the presence of black holes affects the stability of the vacuum. You can find this paper on the archive. The link is in the captions. According to this paper, black holes basically act as nucleation seeds for the decay of the vacuum. This is much like the little metal plate in the chemical hand warmer acts as a nucleation seed. This nucleation effect, however, is only noticeable if the black hole is very small. That's because the smaller the black hole, the stronger the curvature at the horizon. All the black holes that we have seen so far are really, really large and they would not trigger vacuum decay. There are only two types of black holes that could trigger the vacuum decay. One of them is called primordial black holes and the other ones are the tiny black holes that the LHC could create. The primordial black holes would have been created in the early universe at pretty much any mass. They evaporate down and they could be evaporating right now. This happens when they are in the strong curvature regime and then they could trigger vacuum decay. So basically this could happen any time. However, most physicists do not believe that primordial black holes actually exist for theoretical reasons. That's because it is very hard to find a model in which they are produced without having them been overproduced so that the universe wouldn't exist the way that we see it. Black holes at the LHC. If we live in the universe with additional dimensions that are curled up to very small radius, then gravity at short distances might be much stronger than ordinary general relativity predicts. In this case, then, the LHC could produce tiny black holes. There is so far absolutely zero evidence for these additional dimensions. However, they have also not been entirely ruled out, so there are still physicists who think that the LHC might produce these black holes. The LHC risk assessment. In 2008, it went through the press that the LHC might produce black holes that could then eat up the planet. CERN did a thorough risk assessment and found that this is very, very unlikely to happen. This risk assessment contains a lot of scenarios, but a very, very short summary of the argument goes as follows. The energy of the collisions that LHC produces is reached in other situations in the universe in astrophysical processes. If these processes could produce black holes, which can then eat up whole stellar objects, then every once in a while we should see a star vanish without any particular reason. We have never seen any star vanish, and from this we can estimate that it is very unlikely that these black holes would be harmful. 
and it's see black holes trigger in vacuum decay. The solar risk assessment did not take into account the possibility that the LHC black holes might trigger vacuum decay. This is because the paper about the vacuum decay was only published after the risk assessment was done. In fact, one cannot directly use the results from the paper to look at the LHC black holes because in the paper they did not look at black holes in extra dimensions. However, if I'm guessing that the results are similar for black holes in extra dimensions, then I think this actually means that the black holes at the LHC would be less of a risk. The reason is that if a black hole produced in an astrophysical situation eats up a star, then this might happen every once in a while, but we would not see it. And that we do not see it leads to a remaining risk for the black holes at the LHC. However, if the black hole produced in an astrophysical situation does not just eat up the star, but actually destroys the whole universe, then we would not have missed it. So this means in the end that the LHC is actually very, very unlikely to produce any black holes at all. So please don't worry.